Hello and welcome to episode two of the Notcast. It's still uh, 10th of October 2020. It's now considerably later. It's almost about an hour, hour and a half from uh, sunset. So we're in what's called the golden hour. I will now look my most Brad Pitt that I have ever looked. Although I can't instantly recall a film with Brad Pitt wearing a Kraftwerk t-shirt, having a shaved head and a beard. Um, very possibly uh, one of the more... Um, Unusual films, you know the films that people make when they they want to win an Oscar, um, and and they they play meaningful deep roles about being very troubled individuals, possibly that kind of hair. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm wearing a Kraftwerk T-shirt today. I'm going to be talking about the uh, Kraftwerk discography, uh, and also the recent set of reissues and remasters um, that they they uh, released yesterday. Um, but that's not where the Kraftwerk story starts. The first album made by uh, Kraftwerk, although they weren't called Kraftwerk, uh, was by a uh, an, uh, an organisation called Organisation, I believe. Uh, and the album was called Tone Float. It featured two members of Kraftwerk, uh, those members being Ralph Hutter and Florian Schneider. Um, and I think this was recorded in 1969. Luckily, the lineup is listed on the back of the CD, so I can seamlessly look like I know what I'm talking about. It, uh, the lineup also featured um, Basil Hamundi on Glockenspiel, Conga Gong, Musical Box, Bangos, and Voice, um, uh, Butch Hauf on Bass, Skanky Tube, Small Bells, Plastic Hammer, and Fred, Fred Monix on Drums, Bongos, Maracas, Cowbell, Always Need More Cowbell, and Tambourine. Um, this is a, uh, an unofficial CD released in Italy in 1994. It is what's called the needle drop. So someone's put the needle on the record, recorded it, transferred it and put it onto CD. I think the remaining member of Kraftwerk, uh, Ralph Hutter, has probably purchased the rights to this album and therefore prevented it from being reissued. I have no memory of this album or what it's like or if it's any good. I just know it's extremely very different indeed from what Kraftwerk sound like. It's probably on YouTube alongside everything else, so it, it may or may not be worth the listen. Um, the first album, released under the name of Kraftwerk, um, was released probably about 1970-71. Uh, that is, again, an unofficial Italian CD uh, made by the same firm in 1994. Um, this is the only CD release of it that I, I've seen. Um, Kraftwerk really liked Combs at the time, not quite sure why. Didn't sound like um, the Kraftwerk that you know and probably tolerate. Um, there was a third album, Kraftwerk 2, uh, this time featuring a green cone. So nice to see some evolution there. Again, very similar um, and uh, not at all sounding the way that Kraftwerk sound. Now, this is uh, what's called the double album. Uh, this was released in 1974 in the UK on Vertigo Records. It was effectively a compilation of Kraftwerk 1 and Kraftwerk 2 that was pressed after Autobahn became a hit. Um, probably fooled a few people into thinking that Kraftwerk, where is this band that I liked all this time? Well, I'm afraid to tell you, Kraftwerk sounded very different. These are called spaceship labels, presumably because they look like a Roger Dean painting from a uh, some kind of Yes album. Um, I played this recently. Uh, not quite sure why it's not available. It's quite good, but it's not really my type of thing. Now, I bought this in uh, Walsall. Uh, which is my least favourite city in the world, in uh, the year 2000. Uh, this cost me £25 at that time. I think the going rate for this now is around about £80, £90. Uh, might possibly be in better condition at that price than I paid for it. Um, I thought £25 was an astronomical amount of money for a record, because when I was growing up, houses cost £44,000 in 1989 and not currently about three quarters of a gazillion pounds so therefore i still work on the economy that is that 10p suites are approximately the size of a bus whereas 10p suites these days are approximately the size of a 10p coin um, the insert to this album is here uh, and what you can see is that already craft work were very much rocking the sunglasses look there so that's uh ralph with a lot of hair and florian with not very much hair, a trend that the band would continue for many years to come. Um, it, and this contains Kraftwerk 1 and Kraftwerk 2. 
um, in a uh, more affordable budget fashion. Um, the cover is very nice. I've become very used to waveforms um, since I started doing music related things on my computer. Um, and those look like uh, drum hits, I think, with no other sounds going on in them. So I will put these back inside their laminated plastic sleeves because that's what guys do, laminated plastic sleeves for the records or you don't really care for the records apparently. There was one guy I met in 1991 who told me that records smelt different if you bought them from different countries and the German version smelt nicer than the English versions. Um, I have no idea what happened to him. I'm extremely glad that I don't know, to be honest. He was a bit of a jerk um, and he almost definitely isn't watching this. Uh, and if he is, my opinion remains unchanged. Um, and let that be that. So the uh, fourth album released by members of Kraftwerk, although it's the third album under the Kraftwerk name, was this, which is Ralph and Florian. The Ralph and Florian has a very different cover uh, on almost every edition apart from this one. This is an embossed sleeve. Uh, looks like a bit of technology. Um, feels really nice. I don't know why anyone would want to feel an album. I don't even know why people emboss records, really. Um, again, I bought this in Walsall in the year 2000. Uh, for £18, uh, which again was an astronomical amount of money. I decided not to go on a night out and uh, therefore saved myself from both a hangover, lots of drinks and embarrassing conversations with people that were never going to be attracted to me whilst I was single. Instead, I have two Kraftwerk albums now. Um, so this was released in uh, 1973. And it is called Ralph and Florian because the members of the band at the time were Ralph and Florian. Uh, this is the back cover. I'd like to say that this is a unique edition of the album. It has some water staining or uh, some marking here that's taken off a section. But you will also see one of the first things is the uh, the bands here, there and there. The neon lights, uh, which is a theme that the band will return to later on. Uh, Ralph still has long hair. Um, Florian still has any hair um, and in those days they were still doing things as vulgar as playing stringed instruments um, this has uh, six songs on it um, there's a song on it called Tans Music side two track one if you're very old and still work on sides as opposed to Spotify playlists really great track I wish they'd play it live um, I know they don't it seems like Kraftwerk are embarrassed about everything that they did before they started having hits again here's the label spaceship cover Although really it looks like those two alien organism things from the first episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. I wish I was geeky enough to remember, but then probably all the people that know me are really glad that I'm not geeky enough to remember that. Uh, again, you will also see on the back, the cone uh, makes an appearance. Again, this has not been officially released on CD. It is, however... Available from Italian record shops in 1994 as a very dodgy, uh, illegal and unauthorised reissue, again, which is a needle drop by uh, Crown Records from a place I have never tried to pronounce uh, in Italy. Uh, and that's the, the back cover. Um, what I will say is that for Record Store Day in 2020, um, there was allegedly plans to... Uh, reissue those albums on coloured vinyl uh, they mysteriously disappeared from the release schedules probably thanks to the two magical words which are cease and desist i'd like to introduce this mug here it says drink the music this is a monorail uh, records exclusive designed by david shrigley um you can't have mine it's mine but it's very good and it's about six pounds 99 online right so where does the Kraftwerk discography really start to become official well um the the Kraftwerk discography as such officially starts uh, to all intents and purposes in 1974 uh with a single that is called autobahn uh, originally it was 22 minutes long extremely prog rock this uh version the seven inch edit is about three minutes 20 seconds takes all the best bits from autobahn none of the boring bits it also includes the bits where they sound like the beach boys and they sing farm 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 on the autobahn which for those of you who don't speak german i think that translates as i'm driving 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 on the motorway uh, but realistically it sounds like the beach boys and we'll turn into Kraftwerk's great love of uh, american boy bands and rock groups later on um, we also have here Autobahn. This is my, um, a copy which um, once belonged to, I think, my dad, who bought it in about 1974. It is, putting it technically, beat up to shit, but it is an original. 
um, and the cover is fantastic. It's very, um, but I don't know if this is necessarily the original cover that it had or whether this is the cover that it was issued with once the band had a bit of success. There's also another cover to Autobahn, which is here. Uh, now, what you will see is uh, this is a visual which, if you see Kraftwerk live or have seen Kraftwerk live, you will probably see on very, very big screens, which is a depiction of a motorway. Now, this is the first CD issue. This is from, I think, about 1986 or thereabouts. The back cover uh, features a lineup of the band that didn't record on this album. Um, so this was before Kraftwerk really started paying attention to their CD issues. Lots of people weren't paying attention to um, CD releases in the very early days of the format. They didn't really care about that type of thing. And so therefore, uh, what we did have was bands that had CDs that they had very little, if any, control over. Around about 1994, lots of bands decided that CDs were probably going to be the dominant format. They issued remasters, they uh, checked and updated the artwork so it was correct and they didn't have spelling mistakes on and they used the right mixes of the right songs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but before then, it really was a bit Wild West. So, 10 minutes, I haven't even mentioned the new remasters, which came out yesterday 9th of october 2020 which apparently was national album day although in my house it's every day is national album day because an album is the most perfect art form that exists it's even sexier than a book um so this is autobahn this is the uh fourth craftwork album despite what craftwork want you to think and this is the first uh, official album in their current discography that has not been deleted since before Margaret Thatcher uh, was elected Prime Minister about 40 years ago. Sometime around about the late 70s, a lot of the very early Kraftwerk albums kind of disappeared out of official circulation. They were deleted and never repressed. I don't know why that band think that they're embarrassing or for some reason disown them, uh, but it does set out the, the narrative that they were successful right from the off. So Autobahn 2009 remaster, uh, which has now been repressed on coloured vinyl. So I'm going to talk you through. So the one decision I have made is I've made the decision to buy all of these in the German language editions. Um, what may or may not be known is for most of Kraftwerk's career, they have recorded two versions and possibly sometimes up to four versions of each album which have been restricted geographically to certain locations. Um, so, for example, um, there are uh, various albums here. So, you know, The Man Machine, which you probably know, is called Dimensch Machine, and um, they have different uh, performances on. The technology at the time that these albums were recorded on, largely between about 1974 and 1986, um, the Kraftwerk uh, recordings are different on the German versions than they are on the English versions. And the only reason I can tell that is because I listened to one of the songs and the performances and playing was very slightly different. The effects were in different places and the vocals obviously are completely different as well. However, for the German version of, of Autobahn, nothing's changed. Since it's mostly an instrumental album and the lyrics are only ever in German anyway, um, there will be no difference uh, listening to this record, no matter what format your version you listen to. And in fact, I don't think that the remaster is available in a German edition. Um, although all of the remasters contain this here, which is a special edition, um, which indicates that it's coloured vinyl. And the barcode on the back of each one of the records is different and it's stickered. Um, I do not think that um, the, uh, there is a German version of this album. There is one standard international version. So let's go and have a look inside. First thing we've got, 16 page booklet. And uh, that contains the imagery, which we know. There's probably somebody who's got a tattoo of this, actually. Uh, it's not me. I don't know who it is. Uh, I don't know if anyone's got any Kraftwerk tattoos. Never Googled it. But it looks like the type of thing that some guy who looks like me, but probably isn't quite as wonderfully charming and brilliant would have somewhere um sorry if you've got one i'm not trying to insult you i'm just trying to make a cheap joke and i'm not scripting my way through any of these so inevitably some of them are going to fall flat 16 page book on the back we have the alternate version where again these are identical and let's have a look through here now if you're a fan of the band um, you may recognize this artwork here this is taken from the screen films uh, which the band project during the live shows in the days when we used to have concerts those heady days of march 2020 and what you'll see is that there are some substantial differences between the imagery which we have on here compared to the imagery that you will see on other editions of the record 
Um, so, for example, we look through the, uh, the the background on here. It tells us that the, the band lineup has now solidified into Klaus Roder on electric violin, and Wolfgang Fleur has joined the band on drums. But what we have, and and this is a, an unusual turn of events, is um, there is uh, some imagery uh, which features a lineup of the band uh, that recorded this, which was the first time that we saw the four faces of the players. So. And this picture is here. Uh, I don't recognise Wolfgang Fleur on here. It may not be him, to be honest. But what you can see is that obviously Ralph and uh, Florian here. And uh, this man, whose name I have never learnt, um, also appears in the sleeve art to another one of the albums. Turn it round. That's the cover to Autobahn, uh, which is also the cover which was on the original CD issue. And as I understand it, it may have been cropped slightly so that the uh, the mirror and the dashboard is not there. So here it is, lovely, sexy blue vinyl. It doesn't matter what colour it is, really. What matters is that the music sounds good. Um, shall I sniff it and see if it smells any better? Who cares? It smells fresh. I don't really care, to be honest. The thing that matters is what's in the grooves and whether you love it and whether you enjoy it. That's the uh, that's Autobahn which was the remaster from 2009. Um, I'm going to talk about the band's remastering now, if that's okay. Why does a 2009 remaster really matter? doesn't matter, apart from the fact that this original CD edition was taken from the raw album tapes. Uh, the band probably weren't involved in that. They probably didn't sign off the artwork, otherwise the lineup would have been correct on the back. Um, and the, the band probably weren't involved at that point. Um, in 2009, they decided to go through and do a full uh, reconstruction and restoration of their uh, official body of work, starting with Autobahn, going through to 2003's Tour de France, uh, which was then retitled. Um, and uh, in 2004, the band also had uh, to tie in with their world tour uh, a series of remasters, which they didn't release. Um, promo editions were released. This is the Kraftwerk 2004 remasters uh, CD promotional version, um, which was, I think, probably limited to a few hundred copies. wasn't officially available for sale. Uh, it contains the eight remastered versions of the albums uh, with the remastered covers here. And it's got copy protection on it, that wonderfully archaic and ancient technology that everybody hated. Um, I'm going to talk you through this box now, if that's OK. Uh, we might come back to this box later on. Uh, the 2004 remasters contain the albums in new and revised sleeves. Um, and I'm going to touch upon a couple of the differences that we've got with those sleeves as we go along. Uh, just so that it's absolutely clear to you, these 2004 remasters were not issued they weren't commercially available for sale and that's really quite annoying um so autobahn if we can move back to that go back in time 31 years also had a second single um which was uh comet melody or cometan melody 2 uh, this version is from a dutch radio station's stock so if you listened to this song being played on uh radio nederland um sorry if i mispronounced that um, in a place that I've never pronounced and I'm not about to embarrass myself by pronouncing, then you have heard the copy of this record being played on the radio. Um, this record has the dink in it, the hole for jukebox play, and I have no idea if it was ever played on Dutch radio. Uh, it's certainly been played in my house. Right, so um, the next thing we're going to go across to, I'm going to leap across the chronology slightly. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. This is a compilation album called Electrokinetic, which was released in 1981, but it only contains songs from 1972 to 1974, uh, including Comet Melody 2, which I've just talked about, and uh, a remix stroke edit of Autobahn here. For um, discography purposes, I slide it in behind Autobahn. And also, um, I'm going to leap around in the release order here. This is a uh, unofficial concert album that was released through the grey market in 1998 by a company called concert classics um, the lineup is completely wrong by the way uh, it features a radio recording of them performing live on the autobahn tour in america um, 
for some bizarre reason that I cannot understand, it contains two minutes of silence while they have an equipment breakdown and then fades out halfway through a song which they tell us is called that, but is actually dance music. Right, so, Mark, stop yapping on about old records and start talking about the reissues. Well, Radioactivity, the band's fifth album, uh, released in 1975. Um, the coloured vinyl edition is substantially different. This, the, uh, the version that was released in 1975, I think contained this insert and uh, also a back cover photograph of a transmitter or antenna, uh, which is the name of one of the songs that's on the album. I uh, can't remember where I got this copy from. The inner sleeve I chose was black, not one of the originals. Not quite sure why I've chosen it. Probably because I was about 18 and thought it looked cool. So, the album has been reissued and remastered. And it is in a new and different cover. Um, now, there's an element of historical revisionism here. Uh, because as you can see, this looks very different to that. And I think what the band have done... Sorry, I just dropped a bit of the inner sleeve there. I think what the band have done is they've, they've made the decision to take into account the new and updated version of the song that they recorded in the 1990 years uh, for the cover. So, the original version of Radioactivity, as far as I'm concerned, was a concept album about communication using radio to transmit information across the, um, the world. And uh, with titles like um, Antenna, um, Ohm Sweet Ohm, um, Transistor, Radio Land, Airwaves, all of those songs are very clearly around um, radio as a communication tool. Um, and it's uh, probably the album which, where you really start to see the band turning into, by the way, this is a seven inch single of radioactivity with a uh, photograph from, I think, 1977 on the back. Um, so, why am I talking about that? Who cares about that? Let's go through the remaster. 16 pages in a 12 by 12 booklet. Um, just talk through that. So it's a mixture of old and new imagery inside the booklet. Here we have um, the uh, image of the man um, put, waving his hand in front of a light, a laser to activate the, the drum sounds. Uh, these are modern versions of the imagery which the band used during their films. These modern versions have, have I think, been put together in 2008 or thereabouts um, by the band's then visual engineer, Stefan Paff, who I know I have mispronounced his name and I'm very sorry about that. Um, but again, it's all geared in the inside around radio transmissions and information. Lovely booklet. Um, but there is obviously a huge element of historical revisionism. Oh, by the way, this chap here, you will recognise him from the back of the Autobahn uh, album. But aside from the radioactivity symbol here, absolutely no reference in this record to radioactivity as such. So the original outer sleeve of the album is now reproduced on the inner sleeve. And the record itself is completely yellow. So this is the first version that's definitively uh, German. And if you look very closely here, um, you should be able to see, although I have no idea whether it's sending it the re reverse way or not, that it describes itself as Site 2 or Site A. And the only thing that's different about radioactivity or radioactivitat in German is the text. The audio is exactly the same on both the editions. The performances are the same. There is, as far as I can tell, no change whatsoever. So the third of the Kraftwerk official albums, and uh, again, one of the ones, um, and uh, personally, I think it's their first classic, is Trans Europe Express. Now, this album has had three official covers so far. In fact, if you include the single releases, it has something like six. So this is the 2004 remaster. It has the same graphic, but it's reverse colours to this version here. Um, this version is the 2009 coloured vinyl German edition remaster. So you've seen two covers. Um, let's also look at the 7-inch cover. 
that is is one of the nicest seven inch singles uh in terms of cover art i've ever seen it's brisk it's efficient it's just perfect i wish this was the album cover but we don't or you can't always get what you want also this is the uh the album version okay so there's a reflection here again pvc sleeve that's the back of it uh, again that's probably reverse text um, and that's where that photograph comes from in 1977 so if you see this photograph or a variation of it on the back of radioactivity the single was released after 1977 it also by the way i'd like to remind you that it includes the hit single showroom dummies uh, so this edition is on emi but it's actually released by fame which was a budget label which put versions of albums out in the late and mid 80s um, it has pretty much quite cheap production values they have the fame logo that was slapped over everything every record came with a, a label that looked like that uh, but at the time that i was buying these um, and i'll talk about vinyl and original pressings later um, i didn't really care i wanted the album the cheapest way to get it actually was to get it on vinyl i bought a lot of vinyl in the early to late 90s and uh, a lot of these were you know practically picked up for two or three pounds each that's not showing off which people were quite literally leaving their vinyl collections in the streets in boxes for donations or just giving them to record shops and just saying just take this record off me i have the cd obviously the there are a number of steps of vinyl and uh, ownership the first one is paying about six pounds for it out of your pocket money the second one is selling it or giving it away in the 90s when you bought the cd so you can play the cd in your car and then the third step is buying it back in a slightly different cover for about £25, about 25 years later. Um, being the kind of sad spot that I am, I bought them all when people were ditching them all in the mid to, to late 90s. Um, I remember I used to be able to buy every, I bought every David Bowie album um, in the original pressings. Um, pretty scratched, but certainly the, you know, not the from, from around about, you know, up to about 1980. Um, before the Ryko disc came, editions came out, um, I paid about two, three pounds for each of them, um, and it was a really, really strange time. Even then, those Kraftwerk albums, uh, the early ones, which were twenty-five pounds or eighteen pounds, um, were fairly expensive, but you couldn't get them on CD. People were still ditching them. Who's going to listen to Ralph and Florian anyway? Trans Europe Express. Uh, again, this version is the German edition, features the German language performances of the uh, the songs, uh, including um, Show Stefan Poppen, which I know I've got incorrect. Uh, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, for my for my my money, this is a classic album, um, and it is it is actually genuinely beautiful to listen to. And the fact that it came out in 1977, when everybody else was making. Uh, albums like uh, Nevermind the Bollocks and Animals and probably Tales of Topographic Oceans, um, although I've probably got the year wrong. Um, this, this album sounded like it had been transmitted from a hundred years into the future uh, and it was a glimpse of a future that, you know, frankly, I all wanted to live in. So, this version, coloured vinyl, or more correctly, transparent vinyl. I think you can just about kind of see my face through there. Um, this looks to be a standard repressing of the 2009 remaster of the album. Uh, again, check the labels. If you have an opportunity before you purchase, that will tell you definitively whether it is the, the German version or not. This familiar photograph here on the inner sleeve. So effectively, the band have taken all the inner sleeves and um, they've transferred the original album art onto the inner sleeve and they've added new and extra imagery in there. So, for example, this is a... A lovely photograph which again would make a great cover for a compilation which is on the reverse image uh, we also have 16 page booklet oh isn't that train sexy i know i was criticizing people about trains earlier but but there you are um the, this is from the original uh booklet um so i remember seeing uh, this on the insert of the the 1980s um cd and also um let's just quickly go through there for example so that's the cover of the german cd of trans europa express trans europa express uh, and just so that you're aware there are two different covers so this is the english language album which was released about 1986 this is the german edition of the cd which according to this uh, doesn't have a date on it uh, but there were two different covers in two different countries from two different photo sessions if you look 
the images are reversed on the other side. Um, I'll talk about ordering the German CDs shortly, uh, but just so that you know, they've standardised the covers across all of the editions. And this is the 16 page booklet that comes with it. Uh, it features a number of familiar names and details that are on here. Uh, but what we'll do is um, we'll just talk through what's inside this. Um, so we have the uh, inner sleeve, as I understand it. We have a number of other bits and bobs. So we have this classic photograph of the band at uh, Dusseldorf Station. We have this photograph here, which I think is on a single cover. Um, we have this. This is not... Uh, current for the time that the album was released. This is taken from the film for Showroom Dummies that the band uh, filmed in around 2008 uh, when they started adding Showroom Dummies back to their set list. So it's not a contemporary or historically accurate picture as far as I understand it. Um, I could be wrong, but those look to be mannequins and not actually the band members themselves. Um, although this looks a lot more familiar and accurate. Uh, those are clearly the four members of the band at the time, uh, alongside a man with what appears to be Indiana Jones's hat. And uh, this is, again, probably from Showroom Dummies. And uh, we also have the lyrics in German on the inside. Now, since I've never owned a new copy of the album uh, before today, um, I've never actually read the lyrics. I have no idea if those lyrics are correct, that they are in German. They look like they sound. So aware that I'm taking up a lot of time, uh, I'm going to break this into two parts and I'm going to stop when we get to the end of the Man Machine album. Although the Man Machine album is fairly hefty. This is the Man Machine. This is, um, again, this is the Fame Records reissue from about 1983 or thereabouts. It contains an inner sleeve. It tells you all the other great albums and tapes from original artists, original recordings and original quality that you can purchase, including on the side that I'm reading from, Kenny Rogers. I think I'll decline the offer, if that's OK. And on this side, uh, we have Peter Tosh, who I believe died very recently. And um, we have The Beatles, a collection of oldies, which is still unofficially available or more correctly has been deleted. This is for some reason, is a Capital Records edition. I'm not sure if people put this version inside the Fame version. To be honest, I didn't really care. It was 1993. I wanted to add a Kraftwerk album, and this was the cheapest way of getting it when everyone was uh, dumping their collections. What I will say is The Man Machine, uh, this is the English language version of the album, and uh, as you will shortly notice, um, it has a slightly different sleeve design on the 2009 remaster. So, what's the sleeve look like on the 2009 remaster? Well, it looks like that. Or, if you're going to go for the 2004 edition, this is a unique cover variant to the 2004 remasters. That is the cover on the 2004 remasters. Um, it, obviously, all of these colours, it draws um, the uh, comparison, or more correctly, draws... Um, Inspiration from uh, the, the, the Russian artwork um, of the period of around about oh, I don't know, the 1930s or thereabouts. Um, the, you know, the use of the black and the red, the, the, the black shirts with the red ties, which have become iconic. Um, the four people all lined up, which oddly enough, these are again, I think the showroom dummies that we saw on the inside of Trans Europa Express. Uh, Trans Europa, I mean to say. So, Dimension Machine. We have... The original LP cover reproduced on the inside, although not quite reproduced, because you can see this version is limited to a, a black and white and uh, red, whereas this is a full colour version on here. Um, highly unlikely that those versions, the original versions with the original covers and sleeves and mixes and so on and so forth, will ever be available again, um, given the band's notorious understanding and uh, control freakery. Uh, this is the red vinyl version of the Man Machine. Um, this is the German language version. Again, if you look very closely, you can see the German language for the titles. Always the way to check on these. Check and see for the language on the sleeve. And if you can, the language on the sticker on the, uh, the label. Um, there was a red vinyl version of this that was released in about 1978. About 
two minutes before they announced they were going to reissue these albums, I did consider buying the red vinyl version from the 1970s. It was about £100. Um, I considered it for approximately one second and then decided I was going to go and put my money to a better use. Here's the sleeve, by the way. Um, you may recognise this photograph from the 2004 remaster here. So... What's very clear to me is that Kraftwerk can't make up their bloody mind. Um, although what we have seen is with the remasters is that the band are changing the imagery. So they're moving away from photographs of themselves on the covers. They're moving away from um, that to an abstract, classic, timeless, design-based image as opposed to um, photographs of band members. Um, and so you can see here uh, the, uh, the cover, the 16-page booklet, uh, which we will go through. I only looked through this once, uh, so these are photographs that are taken from the, the robots uh, video shoot um, where the band were filmed in their studio, uh, which was called Kling Klang, I think, in Dusseldorf. And uh, what you'll see there is the sonic baffles in the background, uh, and the band were very stylized at this point. So there's Ralph, there's Wolfgang. Who, um, by the look of it, if you look very, very closely, these aren't actually band members. These are mannequins that are used for the robots of the television appearances. Um, so if you look at the, the detail on those, they're, they're simulated human. They're not actual human beings. Um, there's Florian, uh, who uh, sang backing vocals on some songs, but for some reason is using an analogue mic there. Um, and there's uh, Carl Bartos, who is my uh, favourite former member of the band, uh, with the knitting needles that we used as drumsticks. Uh, this is the mannequins posed inside the studio on a mixing desk with a clock. Uh, the eternal march of time. And again, uh, Florian and Ralph looking at a tape machine, probably around about 1978 in the studio. Um, and again... The, uh, the back here has, has more imagery. Now, what we will see on here is uh, a first for the band. There's a name that will appear later on here, Henning Schmitz, um, who is uh, now currently a member of Kraftwerk and has been a member of Kraftwerk for 28 years. Um, after uh, Karl Bartos left, um, Kraftwerk promote from within. And so uh, Henning was a studio engineer and has now become a member of the band. There are a lot of singles that were released from the album The Man Machine. Uh, I'm going to quickly dip into those. Uh, if you're bored, um, just pretend I'm talking about something more interesting. Uh, laughter and funny material can be dubbed in later. I'll also have to pay a royalty to Bill Hicks for that joke. So, The Robots was released as a 7-inch single. This is the German edition of that, which contains... Uh, well, this one contains a few scratches. Um, but it was only released in, I think, Germany. Uh, there's the model, uh, and on the B side, the English version of the model. Uh, this is a, a seven inch of, uh, I think it's neon lights with the model and Trans Europe Express on the B side. I have no idea how you've managed to uh, squeeze all of those tracks onto that single. Um, probably pays at 33 RPM. Uh, if anybody knows what the longest seven inch single of all time is, don't tell me, I don't particularly care. Neon lights was also released as a uh, luminous vinyl 12 inch not really very luminous now used to glow in the dark um, if i'd have had this when i was about 14 i'd have probably tried to melt it under a lamp and then held it up to the and going oh anyway there's a that's the silhouette of the four actual members of from the time uh, and not necessarily the the models so as you can see i think there are some differences with the microphones uh, Florian still has the uh, the flute, um, so he doesn't have a keyboard on this. So this certainly wasn't from an actual recording session. Now, if I remember correctly, this was actually released in about 1981. Um, and there is a reason for that, which I will talk about later. Anyway, this special luminous vinyl disc, uh, quite expensive uh, now to get, I think about £25. Showroom Dummies was also released as a single. Uh, and it was backed with Space Lab and Europe Endless. But I think this was again released in 1981, 1982. Um, and we'll explain why probably in what's called the next episode of this. Um, we also have, and I, I can't believe I've missed this actually, um, is a CD single of Trans Europe Express. 
um, which was released by Capitol Records in 1990. Uh, as far as I know, it is the only place to get the French language version of Showroom Dummies, Les Mannequins, on CD or digitally. Um, so Trans Europe Express had a couple of French tracks on it. I think it had uh, Les Mannequins and um, probably had another one. Uh, and what we can also see is we start to see a standardization in the imagery. So these are the original uh, CD releases from about... Not, so this one, I think, is the uh, the German version, which I ordered in 1997. This is the UK version of it. Or actually, no, it's the American one from Capitol Records. Uh, and what you can see is that you know, they're starting to standardize and regularize the artwork and the backs on there. Right. Um, last thing that we'll do for this session, I'm starting to run out of time, is, is this. This is not one of the remasters. This is a very cheeky uh, retrospective between 1975 and 1978 uh, that's released by uh, Cleopatra Records, um, the place where goth bands go to die, um, presumably because there is some form of contractual thing that prevents Kraftwerk from stopping this being released. Uh, I've changed the cover. That's the actual cover. I don't like that cover. Um, so I've used this picture instead. Um, and again, the CD has that on there. Um, exclusives on this. The uh, French language version of Showroom Dummies is on here. There are apparently single edits of Radioactivity Neon Lights, Showroom Dummies, Antenna, Trans Europe Express, and The Robots. Uh, again, no idea how true that is. Knowing Cleopatra's attention to detail, it probably isn't. I have rambled at you for 40 minutes um, and we've only made our way through half of the remasters and I've barely shown you them. Um, but what I will say is that if you want to get German language versions of the Kraftwerk albums, especially on vinyl, now is the time to do it. Um, these German language versions of the albums have not been released in the UK before. Uh, not officially. Um, I had to order them in 1996 from the very fledgling version of amazon.de in german using some form of translation software and and really hoping that i hadn't managed to screw it up and to spend a fortune for an english version that had been imported into germany that was then being imported back into england um, um, what i will say is that if you if you are a Kraftwerk fan the german versions of the albums are absolutely essential and they are probably, in my opinion, the definitive recordings of the songs. There is nothing that is, there is literally nothing that is lost in translation in the German versions. Uh, and if you have an opportunity to listen to the English versions and the German versions, um, firstly, you'll learn a bit of German or a bit of English, depending upon your language uh, that you can speak. And, and secondly, um, you know, it's, it's a, a, a unique window into a different uh, world, uh, a hidden world almost uh, of craft work, which... Um, certainly before these releases came out was, was expensive to obtain difficult to find um, and by by no means uh you know it undeservedly unavailable uh, i'm going to take a break here firstly i need a drink secondly i've been talking an awful lot thirdly i'm running out of disk space on my mobile phone um i'm going to upload that so that's the four uh craft work albums that we've touched upon so far autobahn radioactivity trans europa express and dimension machine uh, alongside the four albums which have now been written out of history um the tone flow album craftwork one craftwork two uh, and ralph and florian um if you can find ralph and florian craftwork one and two absolutely really really interesting albums very important as important to craftwork as the pre-dark side of the moon albums are to pink floyd's um try before you buy and if you like them great and if you don't that's great too um but i'm going to stop here and i'm going to take a break and i'll join you again shortly thank you